Good morning from Finland. My name is Stefan Kiesner, and today we're going to talk about the dangers of tricarbolic infection, which places millions of seafarers at risk every year. Indeed, there are dozens, probably more than 100 deaths every year from the effects of tricargo liquefaction. Now, what is it and why does it matter? A lot of the products we get uh, coming from halfway around the world and car container ships play an important role in getting products from A to B. What we often overlook is that raw materials often have to get from one place to another. And this is where bulk carriers come in. Bulk carriers carry raw materials like iron ore, nickel, and so on. Now, one problem with that is that some of these materials have different types of behaviors in different conditions. This is especially the case when, let's say, nickel ore gets wet. What happens then is that the ore itself begins to become more liquid. It acts differently in the cargo hold, and it starts to kind of slush around. Now, all of a sudden, your vessel, your ship, behaves very differently in such a situation, and it's much more at risk because storm, big waves, and so on, can essentially topple the vessel over. Now, this is a major problem for the shipping industry, and it's a particular problem in a, some parts of the world where you have a lot of rainfall, where you might not have the technical capability to make sure that the goods in question, let's say nickel ore, are not, stays dry all the time. And this can lead to serious um, risks for seafarers later on. What can international law, what can we as lawyers do about this? Well, it turns out there is actually an legislation about this, specifically in international code, the IMSBC code, the International Maritime Solid Bulk Cargoes Code. The idea behind the IMSBC code and its predecessor, which was the Code of Safe Practice for Solid Bulk Cargoes, is to reduce risk through the use of regulation. Now, those of you who are working in the shipping industry, you might be familiar with that, but the idea to use regulation directly is something that is often a bit difficult for the shipping industry, or has been for a long time. In the last couple of decades, this changed tremendously. We now have far more activity from the IMO, from flag states, also dedicated to making shipping much safer than it used to be. Shipping is an inherently dangerous activity, but it is getting safer. What we can still do is to make sure that the rules which do exist are actually adhered to. When it comes to the MSBC, when it comes to tricargo liquefaction, there are also technical solutions which might be possible, but which will be expensive. More than anything else, the problem of tricargo liquefaction is one of awareness. It might be a cargo hold which isn't properly closed, which allows humanity to get in, which then leads to the sinking of the vessel. Here, it's not just more regulation that we need, but more awareness and effectively implementing the existing norms. This is everybody's responsibility. If you're working in a port, if you're working on a ship, if you're working for a shipping company, Adhering to the rules, in this case, can actually save lives. Now, I realize this is, for non-lawyers, often a very boring thing, adhering to rules. But um, when it comes to the international shipping sector, rules are there for a reason. And in case of tricargo liquefaction, sticking to the rules actually saves lives.